The sun beats down from a blue sky. Metal flexes against flaking paint and rust. Below, in the estate, spring flowers melt. Below, two girls, three boys, ties off, skirts rolled up, jumpers tied at waists, escaping. Escaping the sudden heat, the timetable, drawn to the liminal land between motorway, railway and retail park. Called to where weeds weave over rubbly ground. At my feet. In there? Yeah, there's padlocks. So? Come on then. Watching the ground, they pick their way into my shadow. Only one looks up runs his eye up the skeleton of my body. She's big up close. Where's the middle bit? The tank? It's sunk into the ground. There's no gas in it anymore. This is shit. We haven't even got any booze. The loud girl with the shortest skirt shapes everything that will happen. First, the tallest boy throws a brick. (sighs) Wakes the giant. Hit that. What, the ladder? She points higher to the first of my three small maintenance landings. What do I get if I do? More than you can handle, boy. Oh, for real? (laughs) (laughs) Whoa! So close! Oh, he hit! (laughs) What, Cleggy? No way! (laughs) What are you going to give him, Leah, huh? (laughs) Leah. Groomed and cool and as remote from Clegg as the sun. Bet you can't climb as high as you throw. To that landing? To the top. Clegg's eyes climb the diamond triangulation of my girders and braces, up three stories, five, eight, to where birds alone trespass. Why not? Three boys, two girls. They play their parts as they must. You ain't got the balls. Ain't got the guts. Leah adds the finishing touch. You're going to the top. She puts both hands up inside the back of her shirt. And when you get there... Writhes down one arm, then the other. You're gonna tie... this. From her sleeve, like a magician, she pulls her black bra. She thrusts it at Clegg. He takes it. Feels its warmth. And without a word, walks round to the ladder. Go, Cleggy. But it isn't that simple. The bottom 20 feet have been sawn off. You don't have to do this. Quiet, Alice. The other girl. He looks at her. Sees for the first time her bright eyes, bright mind. Hears her offer. All too late. He finds the sawn-off ladder in the brambles. The thorns scratch, draw blood. It's heavy, but he drags it out and leans it up. It stops, four feet short of the fixed ladder above. Help him, then. He wants to climb. Let him climb. The other two boys hold the sawn-off ladder steady. No one is sure who's lost or who's won as Clegg starts boldly up. He's twice his own height from the ground when he first thinks of falling. Infected, his body grips the rungs. That it? That all you got? He blocks the thought, climbs to the top of the sawn ladder. The gap between the two isn't big, but he must let go of one to reach the other. (laughs) The boy is slight but he trusts his own strength more than the boys supporting him. Fear, as much as courage, pushes him across the gap and onto the vertical ladder. (sighs) Now I feel you, pressed to my iron flank, secure. Facing panels and rivets, you're blind to the height, but your body knows. Every muscle is hyper alert, wired to your balance. It feels good. Like an athlete, a hero. If the old gas guys could do it. You imagine her watching your every move. I'm not doing it for her. Those red, pouting lips. I'm doing it. Pushing you up. To get the ultimate 
Sophie. <laughs> An aerialist climbing to the high wire. You turn to give a showman's wave, and unthinking, look down. At house height, the two girls and two boys are foreshortened to upturned faces, strangers. Keep your eyes on the rungs. My grit on your palms, rust smearing your white shirt. One large flake, a kiss dropped on your eyelid. <sighs> Can't brush it away. Your hands are bolted to the ladder, so you shake your head and... <sighs> The world spins, stomach gulps. Now you admit fear. No hiding from it. Your body betrays you with beating heart, stinging sweat. But that's natural. Eyes on the rungs. Have faith in my structure. Furnace forged when iron was king. Inside the rust, I'm solid still. Leading you hand by hand, foot by foot, up the barrel of the sunken tank and into open air. Wow. The ladder is a tall ship mast, the gentle roll far below, amplified to sickening swings. Look up. Hold on to the horizon. See? All is still. Nothing moving but the wind. What's the problem? Hey! Nothing. I'm, I'm just looking at the view. That's it. Find your rhythm. Rise steadily above telegraph poles, above trees. Not far to the first landing. A caged escape where you can rest. Almost there. Made, Made it. <laughs> Safe. Breathe a moment. Stretch. Wipe off sweat and rust. Hey! That nearly hit me! Stop it! They won't. They can't. It's rust or blood. So you must get back on the ladder. One step over the void. I can't. Just grab the rungs. I can't. Do it. Think of her. I'm not doing it for her. Good. That's good. Four stories high, over halfway. Oh. Only hands and feet feel any attachment to earth. Slight as a lightning rod. You're afraid, but not desperate. Don't think of the sun burning your neck, the pouring sweat, the cramping toes and fingers. Be above it. A giant. See your world unfold. A slice of woodland. A mirror glance of canal. Car parks glitter. Shit. Don't. It might be them. Won't be. Call me tell. You scrabble for rescue, but your hand is shaking, slick with sweat and... No! Oh, last lifeline cut. But the only thing running through your mind is... Oh, Sophie. <laughs> the phone hits the ground without a sound. And with that terrifying measure of distance, you see with utter clarity your own body following... Smashing through the metal lid of the tank with a force that crushes both. I can't get down. I put a gull scream riding an updraft. Quiet Alice has found her voice because no, they saw you starting back down and they took it away. The sawn-off ladder lies flat on the ground, graphic as a child's drawing, brutal. So you're going up. Hand, foot, hand, foot. Below, the boys are taking foot. Alice away. She doesn't want to go, can't bear to stay. She alone senses the terror that awaits them all. The others just feel cheated. In every way, you are beyond them now. So it is nothing to them to walk away. Feet on the ground. They no longer matter. I'm not doing it for them. 
I'm part of the high spaces now. Seven stories high, alone on the iron scaffold with the unending winds, caught among inhuman things and mindlessly huge dimensions. The unbearable isolation. The pull of gravity calling you to Earth, calling you home. <laughs> Panic. Finally, violently escapes. Guts pitch in perpetual fall. Senses scream, let go, just let go. But hands lock like iron between push and pull. You are racked in sickening, spinning hair. <laughs> That's it. All done. Now, look out. Find the horizon. Breathe. And breathe. The second landing is above you. Not far. There you can rest. Just one hand after the other. One hand. <laughs> Hand, foot, hand, foot. I am sound. I have stood for a hundred years. When they come for me, the wrecking ball won't touch me. No bricks and stones will break my bones. You hear me? They will have to cut me from the sky with fire. You're almost there. You're almost there. We see, at the same moment, the braces supporting the landing have rusted away. It hangs by its own flaking skin. There is no refuge, nowhere to go. Thoughts close into a dull roar, each rung the last wrench of strength. Fighting rust, sky, sickness, death, and the pull to just let go. Climbing until there are no more rungs. He thinks about the black bra. <laughs> maybe it's still in his pocket, maybe not. His hands could never tire it any more than his mind can make his legs climb down. Shivering, past knowing what more he could ever do, he hooks his knees through my rungs, jams his arms up to the elbows, and hangs in my embrace.